All right, I think this video is going to be me playing Vialva in a second game. I should have lost our first one, but I got very lucky and escaped. And now I will be hopefully playing against Vialva again shortly. But first, Vialva and Aesalaxi are playing for Clan League. This is a huge match in the second half of Clan League. Uh, TM is currently the leader and favorites to win. Avalanche are in second and Brotherhood of Cedar in third, but I think all are in hitting distance. So whoever gets a lead in this matchup is in really strong shape. So far, Brotherhood of Seed and um, TM have both started well in the second half. I believe both have won two games and lost zero to start the second half. So both look in very good shape moving forward. And I thought it might be fun to catch the end of this game. So what's going on here? Now, Vialva always plays kind of complicated stuff where he doesn't necessarily achieve the kind of structurally desirable things. Well, I think, which doesn't mean his moves are wrong. He is just willing to kind of forego standard advantages for more complex ones. Aesalaxi, I think, plays fantastic. And this word can sound critical. I really don't mean this this way because it's a word I would happily apply to myself as a, you know, one of my own strengths really fantastic conventional play. So first thing I notice is Aesalaxi has the plus wall in three that flips everything. Now Vialva has combos back in both two and four with the same card, so he would probably meet that move in one with Ruby Dragon and leave 4775 up. So it doesn't look like me to me like Aesala can take the combo immediately. Similar, it might be dangerous. Aesala also has the plus in four with the same card, 19A4, and that will plus the card in five, which flips eight. But again, there is at least the opportunity for a plus wall back, flipping a whole bunch of things, because notice when it flips five, it flips eight, which flips seven. So this is one of those spots. Also, Aesala has the combo in two, right? So it is one of those spots where I feel like a funky move could be defensible. For instance, uh, it probably doesn't quite work, but I was thinking an interesting idea is um, four, six, seven, five, and two. It flips five and eight. And the point is, if Vialva combos back in four, you haven't flipped the card in six, so you can then combo in three, flip six, which will flip back five, eight, and seven. Um, but I think the problem is if Aesala goes two, Vialva can just block one with 7274, and then Aesala has to block four, and Vialva will have the double capture on the final turn, which will secure the tie. So I think that is a tying idea. I don't think an, a move in one makes any sense. Vialva would love to play 7274 and three, and then I think Aesala would be in a lot of trouble, right? Uh, if Vialva can leave two and four open, Vialva is likely in very good shape. Most moves in three will be met in one. Moves in one will be met in three. We can sort of pair up the board. So I think if you're Aesala here, you want to block either two or four, right? That fundamentally the right ideas are likely to be moves that block two or four. Um, I'm not doing much calculating because... I also, uh, I totally missed, Aesala has another card that pluses in three, four, six, seven, five. So Aesala has combos everywhere, but Vialva has combos back in last turn. Um, but the hope for Aesala is because you have combo threats in three, if you block one of two or four, Vialva can't use the other necessarily because you hit in three. And that was the idea behind my line in two, but yeah, four might be a better way to do it. This one doesn't win, though. This isn't a win. Um, I'm not sure if there was a win, but this isn't it. Because now 7274 in 1 makes it 5-5. Five, five, and Vialva, or sorry, Aesala will only have um, single captures in reply. And Vialva always has the capture back because 4775 covers 1984's 9 to the right. So this one didn't win. Also, actually, does this lose? This looks losing. Vialva should play in three. Seven, two, seven, four, and three. And four, seven, seven, five sweeps the end game. Either card in two is not only comboed, but the combo flips five, which flips eight, which flips seven. 
the Alba has won this game. Yeah, and sees it very quickly. Um, just really nice recognition of the um, coverage 4775 has here. Uh, 4, 6, 7, 5, and 4 was not the right card for that square. I think 1, 9, 8, 4 would have been better. 4, 6, 7, 5 is sort of just better than 1, 9, 8, 4, given the hands, because 4, 6, 7, 5 has the same plus, has a better plus wall because it can't be comboed back in 3, has a plus wall in 2 that 1, 9, 8, 4 doesn't have, and has the 5 to the left that the Alba's hand has a harder time dealing with. So I think a better version of this move would have been 1, 9, 8, 4, and 4. A nice win by Vialva. I assume there were saves for Asola. The position looked promising. I was thinking Asola should be looking to win. Uh, but we can see that Vialva's not really looking to lock in cards, but looking to make sure he has a lot of combo potential can be really dangerous. And um, he's now going to win this game 8-2 to two because Asola gives the fun combo at the end. Though actually, kind of hard to avoid. Um, so, huge win for Brotherhood of Seed. And uh, hopefully now I can play my game. Uh, but, very, very interesting game. Um, last game I thought I played quite poorly. Hopefully I uh, have better inclinations this time. Uh, oh. good, for, uh, good for TTA being against the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. And yeah. Uh, uh, checking in to see if our game's happening. Huh. Nice win for Vialva. Huge win for Brotherhood of Seed. That's um, one of those pivotal games that honestly has a decent chance to decide the whole event. Or at least be very um, strong for it. It is an excellent result for Brotherhood of Seed. It is also a really good result for Avalanche, right? Because if we're in second place, we want to see third place beating first place. Though... As a quite biased individual, um, I'm kind of just rooting against Brother to see. Obviously, I want Avalanche to do great, but I am a little conflicted here. All right, which match day was this for my records? That was match day three. It's on TM's rule set. Vialva beats Asola 8-2. Just a huge result. And the move order for my records was 5, 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, five starters in hand games make a lot more sense than they do and have in uh, random games. And I have a lot of stat stuff, some of it up, on um, the lack of success five starters have seen. But in hand games, they've been doing quite well in Clan Wars. Another really pivotal game was uh, Scythe beating Tezuka in the first half of, of Clan League um, that ended up giving TM a really good position, though Avalanche ended up tying that matchup. Interesting game. Sort of curious to check that one in the solver because I didn't get to see the early moves. And uh, what were the alternatives to that move in in four? Because that one didn't work. I think Asola is in general a tremendous uh, hand game player, especially. And on the other hand, Vialva very good at complicating and keeping things tricky. Uh, there's a reason, uh, you know, I started my interview series with, with the Vialva game. All right, I haven't gotten a response yet, so let's bring up the solver on that last one. Maybe this video will just be about that, and it will be very misleading to, uh, to watch. Right. 
seven, four, five, eight, four, three, nine, A, nine, eight, two, six, four, seven, seven, five, and seven, two, seven, four. And then on the other side, we have nine, five, two, nine, seven, seven, six, five, four, six, seven, five, one, nine, eight, four, 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 eight, seven. I've decided it's probably less boring to hear me read them out and to hear nothing at all when I've put stuff in, but uh, um, all right, actually I am getting a game, so we'll be checking that later and uh, I will be putting up, let's get the rule set. I should have uh, put up, been ready to go on this, but you know, uh, private, Open, five minutes, level 10. I think it's all rules. I want to say non-FF. Let's check. Level 10, open, all rules, non-FF. Cool. Maybe afterwards we'll check out that other game. Actually. Let's do it after. Uh, hoping to redeem myself for prior really abysmal play. Just a really poor third move. All right, double numbers. We both have double numbers facing upright. He also has double numbers facing down right and down left. He also has first turn. How's the directions look? We have tens in every direction but up where we have nines. They have no tens facing down though, so our nines may be pretty good, specifically nine four a six, as long as it doesn't have to face a nine facing down from the top row, will um, be able to take anything. Their hand, they have two tens facing right, a 10 facing left. They have nines facing down and nine facing up. Nothing higher. Um, but it doesn't necessarily look like my nines facing down do much, right? Like my four, eight, nine, seven is totally covered by seven, six, nine, six. So Chrono seems like a valuable card, right? Nine, four, a six seems like it has some stuff that is hard for their hand to beat. And I should be looking you know, sometimes to hold on to it, sometimes to use it, but trusting that that card should be able to have effect if I can uh, play the game well. I don't see any obvious corners for me. If they start with Robo in nine, I will like, because I have a really good capture already in six, um, and a sort of backup capture with Chrono in six, I will look to set up in eight, probably playing in seven. Something like 881A Laurasia, I think it is it, in 7 looks promising. Um, because if I make a threat in 8 there, and if they want to block 8, they'd have to do it with Marley, or they're really susceptible to combos. Now that might be a card they're okay getting out of their hand, but it means they don't flip 7, and maybe I could go in 4 and have a promising L, or maybe I can just go in 6 and have a promising L that way. Either way it looks pretty hopeful. Um, so I don't think their big corner looks too scary. Maybe Laurasia in 9. I think Laurasia is the name of 881A. 881A in 9 may be a little more tricky. Because um, I have more ways to capture, but they're less comfortable. And you never, as we, as we sort of saw in the last game, you never want discomfort versus Vialva. Like, he's going to do really well in complications. And you want to, to some extent at least, I think, in my opinion, um, keep the game out of the places where he is most comfortable. I think a potential weakness is if he has not set up sufficient combos, he may make kind of a move too many setting up combos that ends up giving you too many safe squares to play, right? And so if you don't concede many combo squares for him early, Sometimes he will make mistakes in the mid-game where he's trying to set those combo squares up 
but they're not quite going to get there, and there needs to be a different goal at that point. That might be wrong, though, but uh, I think puts a very high premium on combinational play. And, and we saw that in the last game where he absolutely whomped me, where, you know, I went in two and he replied in seven, and I could not take from eight due to combos, right? He was doing stuff where he was trying to set up kind of as trappy combinational play as he could. A five starter. Well, it's hard for me. I, I do have safety. Chrono in four is immediately safe. And also threatens to be built out from. Right? I can follow Chrono in four with eight a five six in one, and that will also be safe. The worry is if I ever flip five and there's any combo play on it, and it can be very hard not to flip five, right? Any card I ever play in six is going to flip five. Most of my hand in eight is going to flip five. So if I walk into combos down the road, it can be very um, dangerous for me to have left everything vulnerable to five. So one candidate move is going in four. Taking safety, saying I can build out from the safety. It will make it difficult to play in some other squares later, potentially. But also, at the moment, he has no combo play off the card in five. Though I trust he will find ways to initiate that. Other things we could do. He has a bit of a left issue, I think. Um, after this move, there is a 10, but nothing else high. Other directions have more options of different high cards. Also, yeah, yeah, no, I think that's true. So if I played something like... If I played something like 881A in 7, his only capture from 8, I can combo back really comfortably. And I can threaten to follow up with something in four that would potentially also be safe. Um, could also start with Bart in seven with the same kind of idea, but that gives a few more options of how to take from above. I don't have combo play against anything in four, though, um, and my kind of recapture in eight I don't love there. So that's, that's one idea. I can also try to do it starting in one, um, rather than starting in seven. So if I started with, say, Bart in one, threatening Chrono in four. But is that any better than just starting with Chrono in four? The reason I kind of don't want to start in Chrono 4 and the reason I was looking at 7 rather than 1 is if I can start in 7 and then follow up in 4, I could use 9595, a different card than Chrono, but that flips 5 in a way I might not want. So I'm probably going to end up going 4 here. Notably, it does block the square. He has already has good combo play against his starter. Oh, one other thing I should check is if I follow with 8A, 5, 6, and 1. So can he play a move in 3 that sets him up to cover 1? That's a question. And he can do it with 8, 1, 8, 8, 1A. But he really doesn't have 2 there, so I don't think that would be a move. And I don't think there's another way to do so. So that's promising. And the other thing I wanted to check, I have now forgotten... Oh, it's does Kenny grab safety in one or seven, and is that unpleasant for me? And the answer seems to be Ken grab safety in one, but to do so gives me safety in seven, right? Because 8A55 is the card that covers my 8A56. And if he grabs safety in seven, I have the safety in one. So either way, I'm going to be able to match safety if he plays for safety. 
And while I am a little worried in general of flipping the card in five now, because it could lead to a really deadly chain, at the moment I'm not seeing potentials in his hand that lead me to be that worried about combos. And maybe that's wrong, right? I have two nines remaining in my hand, seven, six, nine, six, and two eights going up. So I think like the most likely way for me to lose this game really badly is seven, six, nine, six sweeps me on the right row. That it just has my whole hand susceptible to combos. So I'm going to have to be quite careful about that. And I should potentially really look to get either... Well, I was going to say either Bart or the 9595 out of my hand or 8818A eight, eight, or 8856 eight, out of my hand. But that's my whole hand. Um, so any card out of my hand gets out something vulnerable to 7696. But that really indicates that 7696 is potentially a big problem. On the other hand, um, a common move here is just to go in six, and if he goes in six, that worry suddenly disappears. I'm never getting swept up and down. So one advantage of going in four is in some ways it really reduces the risk of being swept in that way, right? I make the game a side-to-side -side game, and his hand is more side-to-side -side than up-down, but it might be more dangerous to my hand up-down. hope that made sense. <clears throat> Um, also, sometimes I don't play 8A5-6 in one, maybe I play Barton one, which lets them capture, but I do have the combo back. And so if I can, mm, I was thinking if I can play Barton one and then follow with 8A5-6 and two, I get extra safety, but that's covered by 7696, which is really the problem, a surprising amount for my hand. Oh, I haven't said best of luck. I think this is a promising spot, right? I think five starters and randoms, as I said, I think are difficult to play well. And I also think that, you know, an early start of safety with a hand that still looks pretty viable is in decent shape. Um, One, uh, he, he has a bunch of things he could put in seven that I'd have trouble capturing, but I think I'm replying to most moves in seven and one anyway. So, I don't know where Vialba likes to go in these structures. There are some players that will always play three or nine. There are some players that will usually play six and like sometimes three or nine. There are some players that will usually play one or seven, and there are players that are really varied. Um, I think Delhi is really varied in this enclosed, but in open, he ends up going for the J in three or nine quite a lot. But he usually gets it out of a different move order, so that's not actually the move he's making. Uh, he's usually like corner is met by a center and then he plays a side. Very different move order to get here. Should not assume he'd play the same way this type of position. I think what I'm most scared of is a move in seven, actually. Um, I have the safety in one, but I just don't like the left side of the board getting boxed off because it feels like that seven, six, nine, six is just going to eat me in a couple turns. But I'm not sure he is a good follow-up, because he likely won't have anything all that comfortable to put in either 2 or 8 after. And he doesn't have great side-to-side -side sweepers, so it's hard for him to play the T in 6. So, is it that scary? Probably not. I don't know. This next move's going to be really uh, pivotal. Alright, he goes for 1. Notably sets himself up in two. Notably, if I capture from two, has the combo back. I was assuming I would take safety in seven, but I totally missed that the, he, they could do something effectively safe without using up um, the card with the uh, double fives. Now, actually... There's still a decent case for going in seven. Um, it sets up that I have 
some threat in eight, though currently same walled back, but I would have a plus in eight. If they take the plus, they uh, the plus wall, they go up six four. I play nine five, nine five, and nine. That's gonna flip eight and five. A little dangerous to flip five, but I think okay here. I'll be up six four. And that card is safe, right? And where do they go? They go seven, six, nine, six, and six, I guess. Are we tie? Mm. Okay. All right, let's check the other forcing move. What if I just take the combo, in, uh, take the capture in two, get comboed in three? Because I have, I have a plus back in six there. And I will be up seven, three, and I really don't think they can combo my hand there. Uh, they do have at least a tie, though. They can play 7, 6, 9, 6, and 7, and 8, a 5, 5 does actually kind of sweep my remaining hand pretty well. Hmm. And also, if they don't rush to take, am I sure that's that good for me? It's probably pretty good for me. Okay, so 8, 8, 1, A, and 2, I think is a decent idea. No, I will be up 8, 2, won't I? So 7, 6, 9, 6, and 7 doesn't tie at the end, right? Because I capture something, so I it's currently 5, 5. So I would be up 6, 4 going in 2. They go in 3. They flip all but one card. Um, so they'd be up 6, 4 because they flip two back. I flip everything on the board, which would, would put me up eight two. And if they go seven, six, nine, six, and seven at the end, I can, I can't play in eight because I'm comboed, but I can play in nine with say four, eight, nine, seven, which is still in my hand. And they double capture, but still lose 6-4. So can I just go in 2? If they can't play 3, it's difficult, right? Like, if they go something like safety and 7... Yeah, if they, uh, it's not safety in seven, though, because I have nine, five, nine, five. So I block three. I think that's a tie. I think it's a tie. There, six, four, there, still six, four. They play eight, eight, one, A, and eight. After, so uh, two, uh, two, seven, three, eight, and seven, six, nine, six, indeed does sweep up down. I have to block with a 8856 and a 6 and we tie. All right, just make sure the time is what I think. All right. I think that complicates enough it's worth trying. I think it's worth trying. I don't think it loses. So we're gonna go for it. Um, there was also the idea of going in seven, which seemed fine, but I had forgotten which move I wanted to play there, so I went with the thing I'd looked at more recently. Mm -hmm. I'll say that's because I was uh, talking while playing, though it's not like I don't sometimes forget to while uh, not talking. Interesting position. I do feel a little like I'm, uh, you know, going head first into the lion's den here, right? Going into a complex combo position against a player who just thrives in that. But 
Like, I didn't see setups. Like, even random squares like 8, there's no move in 8 that sets up a threat in 7. So it's very hard for them to set up more threats on board than 3. So I thought the logic fit was such that even though I'm not calculating super in-depth, because that's really hard to do while talking, and also I'm lazy, uh, it meant there's kind of, there's they go in 3 or they don't go in 3. And I could sort of define in my head those two spaces rather than like they go in three or they go in seven or they go in nine or do they have something weird in six or eight. It sort of boils down to do they have three or do they not have three. And here my argument is they cannot play in three. And if they cannot play in three uh, and they don't really have setups anywhere else. Now you could imagine some creative play where he goes like nine and I have three safely and everything I have is safe and then he goes seven and I'm just forced to take five and the combo back beats me at the end but I did not see any good setups for that either um, like seven six nine six and nine sets up eight but I don't think that's enough having one side of the card is just not going to do it and so I think the key line is seven But actually, I, I didn't really consider, I assumed I'd go in three. There's still a case against seven for going in eight that I can just plus them. Because they still don't have three yet. Because I have the combo back in six, and that does put me up enough. So this might have been a really good path for me. Uh, it'll, I'll have to calculate next turn, but next turn the calculation should be uh, doable, even though I'm not. You know, even though I'm talking. Uh, really interesting prior game. I'm excited to look at the uh, Vialva Asola game after this. I think that'll be a, a, an interesting exploration. So um, there will be like timestamps at the bottom of the video that, you know, tell you when I'm going from one thing to the other. So if you try to skip ahead now, I'm sure I will have... Uh, uh, I will be spoiling the result of this game in that discussion, so you won't be able to do it without uh, being spoiled, if anyone cares about that. He's picked up 881A. That's interesting, because if he uses it anywhere other than 3, then he loses all threats everywhere, right? And if he does use it in 3, I really think my combo back, which does put me up 8-2, um... It's close to working for him, because if he plays 7, 6, 9, 6, and 7, I can't play either card in 8. Because if I play Barton 8, 4, 8, 9, 7, and 8, Marley has the plus, because I've put 8, 8, 5, 6, and 6. So 8 plus 5 equals 8 plus 5, and that's going to flip everything back. And if I put... Is it Dalimar? Is the card just Dalimar? I really should know this. Uh, let's open image in new tab. It's race length. Hmm, Dalimar is going to kill me. Um, if I put 9, 5, 9, 5, and 8... Then Marley, same walls, which also flips everything. So Bart is under flipping five, but sets up so he has a plus that also flips six, which then flips five, while Raistlin is higher and gets plus walled, or same walled. All right, we have a different move. Hmm. Okay. So my instinct is 8A56 in in 7. And we're just going to calculate it out. 8A56 in 7. Uh, we're just going to go in chronological, or like just in order. Uh, Laurasia in 4. I will still be up 6-4. I can play Barton 8. I win. Marley in 6. I can play... Racelin in nine, and I win. Larasia in eight, I can play Bart in six, and I win. Marley in eight flips my card, so it is five five, but I can play Racelin, let's say in six, and I win. Uh, Larasia in nine. I can block 8, and Marley is mostly dead in 6. Marley in 8, and 9, I can block 8, 
and Laurasia is mostly dead in six. Um, so I think 8a5-6 in seven should win. Let's double check, because if it doesn't win, I will be throwing away big equity here by playing it too quickly. All right, let's do a different order this time. 8a5-6 in seven. If they play Laurasia in eight, it is still 6-4. And I can block six with Raceland, the nine down won't be taken, I win. If they play eight a five, five and eight, they do flip me, go up five, five, but again, Raceland and six is untouchable, and I win, because it flips the one card I need. If they start in nine, either card in nine can only take five, will not take it with a combo, and um, cannot take the, each card in six can only take five, and cannot take nine with a combo. I'm already up six, four, cannot take either with a combo. So those are just safe. And finally, if they go in six, um, if they have Marley left over, I can play Bart in eight. And this time they won't have a plus, like when I put eight, eight, five, six, and six in a previous line. And if they put Marley in six, then I'm still up six, four. Um, and I can either play Racelin in eight because they won't have the combo, or I can play Racelin in nine. So we we double checked, and we're going for it. Um, I continue to find Vialva a tricky player, and. You, you, the move in one was obviously saying I have a ton of combo potential. And here I tried to call the bluff. Um, and I think one thing I am good about, not always, but in general, a strength I have is if a move is easier to calculate, meaning like if I think this move forces a move, I will look further than many players will. I think some people will be like, I get comboed back, that looks terrible. Or, I get comboed back, that looks terrible. Oh no, I combo them, I win. And I didn't stop there either. I looked to see if they could set up combo threats at the end there too. And for a sec, after, I, if, so when I went in two, if he goes three, I go six. I thought for a sec his move in seven was a tie, and then I checked it further and realized it wasn't. But I think a strength of mine is going further on lines that look bad, if they are straightforward enough that I can calculate them relatively quickly. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on a confusing and bad looking move, but I will spend time on a forcing and bad looking move. And I think that is a useful, a useful trait. Uh, and Raceman Majeer comes good. Oh, so lucky to win this matchup. I do think Fialva is very strong and playing really well right now. Um, so, good game. Feel a lot of relief. Obviously not the biggest event ever, but it's been a long time since I've won one of these or not gone out early. So it's nice to be back in the finals of one of them. And I think I played well here in this second game. Not in the first one. That was very bad. And uh, I'm getting a message from Wingus. So I'll be playing that in a sec, but I think I will be playing that on a new video, which means, sadly, you will uh, never get your final coverage of... Uh, of the Ace of the Alva game. Uh, maybe we can switch over that just for a moment. Where is it? Yeah, okay. Did we do it? I think we did it. So this game started in five. Um, Aesla played in nine. The Alva took safety in eight. Aesola, I think, wisely took uh, played here with the point that if Fialva takes, um, what is the point? Let's have it tell me. 
Asila combos back everything, and Vialva's hand's pretty dead. Yeah. Um, Vialva found this move, which loses, and in fact loses a number of ways, but is tricky. And when Asila went for this, Vialva found the win. Um, but in fact, there were lots of wins here. Um, I had thought blocking two or four is the likely idea. Um, wins are found in three, four, three, one, and four. So I was nonsense. My logic was way off. All right. Uh, anyways, well, uh, well complicated by Vialva to uh, save that. Does need to move here. And uh, did I correctly move the thing back? I think so. I'm gonna screenshot the position just to, uh, just in case there's a timeout here. Uh, there's not. I look. I screenshot on the other my other uh, monitor. All right. Post the game. Seven, eight, six, nine. All right, uh, so I will end this video and start. Hey, you don't care, but I will start recording my next one.